I love a good board game, as evidenced by the many behind me and probably another 50 downstairs. But I've always wondered how they're created. And on this episode of Session Zero, I actually talked to a board game designer who's already designed one very successful game and is in the process of designing another one. Josh from Verump Games is right around the corner. I can't wait for you to meet him. That interview starts now. Hey, Josh, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. Thanks for coming on. You are uh, unique to my show. Normally, I interview TTRPG creators, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, all that good stuff. Uh, but you are an actual board game designer, and I've always been fascinated by this topic. So you have a game that you already have out. And what, is, which, what, is, what is that one called? That one's called I Am Death Now. Uh, mm -hmm. Question mark at the end. Um, uh -huh. And that one came out in 2020. What is that game all about? So I like to call it a family friendly game about death. <laughs> um, you are uh, essentially student deaths trying to earn your death license. So you're taking your uh, death certification examination. Mm -hmm. And in your test, you have to kill um, uh, your test subjects before the rest of your classmates um, by inflicting different types of pain. Um, oh wow! But I do call it family friendly because there's no um, like gore or blood or violence. It's all very um, tongue in cheek. Or Scaring it? someone to death. Yeah. So you know, like I stub my toe on the bed trying to get up to go to the bathroom. That's minus one pain point. So um, it's very um, I would consider family friendly death, which is not uh, normal. Yeah. So um, how long did it take you to develop that game? Uh, um, maybe about a year. I started in 2020. So this was like heat of the uh, pandemic. Um, just kind of stuck at home. And, um, before that, I, I only ever played like Clue and Monopoly. And, mm -hmm. and like, I, I was not into the board game. Like, I didn't know this board game world existed mm -hmm. per se. And then somewhere um, I ran into um, the game Unstable Unicorns, which is a fun game. Yeah. But I was like, oh, this is like, I've not heard of this. This isn't Clue. This isn't Mousetrap. This isn't, you know, like anything. And we played it and I was fascinated by it. Um, and it kind of like something weird in my head clicked. was like, oh, somebody just like made this. Like, you don't have to be like, like, it's not relegated to Mattel or, mm -hmm. um, or Hasbro or whatever. Like, somebody literally just was like, I made a game. It was popular. You know, you can get it at Target, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And so that fascinated me. And so, like, during this downtime, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to, like, I had no intentions of what was going to happen. But I was like, I'm going to try to make a game. Um, and so I tried to make a game. Um, it was a lot of... Pretty challenging, although I, I don't know. I don't have comparison. I've never made a game before. But like trying to do it in the middle of a pandemic where you can't have people over to like play it with you. Sure. So like how do you play test this game? And I was still new to this whole area, so I didn't know anything about like tabletop simulators or anything like that. Um, the first couple iterations, um, you know, I, I forced my wife to play it multiple times over and over <laughs> and over and we would like play two player and then like we would both take on two characters and play four you know we'd like walk around the table and and play this and this and then walk mm -hmm. this, you know like try to test out four player and then eventually i started i printed out a bunch of copies and like it was all on prayer paper and i cut it and i put it in a bunch of envelopes and i just mailed it to um different people that i knew people i did that i didn't know um and so that they all played it within their, you know, like safe, the COVID safe group. Sure. Um, and offered feedback. And, and that's essentially, I kind of play tested the whole thing um, through the mail um, <laughs> until, you know, I, I thought it got to a point where it was, it was ready to, to go somewhere. And then um, I decided to put it on Kickstarter and it, um, 
under it's it got funded in three days and it raised way more than i had ever like i, I had no idea what i was going to uh, mm -hmm. and so that was that was that so, i have talked with other uh game developers for board games and the logistical process of just getting the boxes designed and the pieces made and all that must have been very challenging especially during that 20 2020 2021 period yeah it was definitely uh a learning experience um i would be lying if i didn't say like i had that unstable unicorns game and this was like my um kind of entryway into this this world mm -hmm. and so i was like i'm just gonna what are the dimensions of this box my game has to fit into this box what is what is the dimensions of their rule book how does it fold like i'm just gonna i literally i found the manufacturer that made that game and i was like let's do this because it exists I know that, like, I'm not trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel. Um, what are the dimensions of this box? What are the dimensions of this thing? And I just kind of, pretty much the same, you know, dimensions and size as as that game. And that was kind mm -hmm. of the starting point. Is just taking something I know, um, making it match my stuff, um, and just learning a lot about the manufacture process, but also the hardest part was really just like the, the fulfilling, you know, shipping it to like a warehouse and then having them mm -hmm. fulfill it out. Like that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I did an interview with, um, someone from double exposure at Gen Con last year. And they have a whole hall where they have people just like you who are developing games who are play testing them right there on the spot. Yep. And some of them are on napkins and, you know, they're all various, you know, they're all the way from uh, paper napkins all the way to bas basically finished products. Right. But I'm always amazed at just the amount of effort that goes into creating these games. Now, uh, you mentioned that you really weren't um, a board gamer before you designed your own. Um what do you think about board games now? Have you played? I'm sure you've played more, uh, more than Mousetrap now. I always loved playing board. Like even growing up as a kid, I loved playing board games. I loved getting board games. I just didn't realize there's a whole, and like Target now, you can you know it's expanding. Barnes and Noble expanding their selections and that kind of stuff. But like growing up, uh, you go to Target, you go to Toys R Us, and it's. Clue, it's sorry, mm -hmm. it's you know, like that was it, and so right. I love playing those games. Um, but up until you know, you know, a couple of years ago, I didn't realize there's this whole just world of other stuff out there, and right, like, and even just learning, like, oh, there's mechanics and there's different, you know, different, you know, themes and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yes, I do, I do have a kickstarter addiction i guess i, yeah, I don't we all there's there's always at least one kickstarter that's that i've you know back that's in some ends of the process whether i just backed it or it's being printed or it's being you know there's always one arriving at least you know every couple of months um so yeah i just love seeing it especially now from a design perspective mm -hmm getting those games and, and like being able to dissect how they, Oh, like Absolutely. this is how this works. And this, you know, it's, it's, I love, you know, seeing creative um, designs in that way. Yeah. I, I think I, as a board game enthusiast, uh, we have, I have a whole bunch behind me and we have, we probably have 60 or 70 games and that's a small collection. Right. Um, you know, folks on board game geek, some of those folks have thousands of games and just, it's insane. But uh, I, yeah, I love the mechanics. Uh, you know, every game that we play, there's an interesting mechanic where a little light bulb goes on. And I'm like, that is so clever. Yeah. You know, how do people think of those little mechanics, you know, to make things work? It just, it's incredible. Um, Will Wheaton early on in the 2000s had a, a show called uh, Tabletop. And that was a renaissance for board gaming. Well, that's what I'm thinking is a definitive board game moment because once that show came out, Board games had a resurgence. You're starting to see them on Target shelves are more accessible. You don't have to go into the comic book shops or the game right. stores specifically to get them. So, and now 
like you've discovered, you can start producing them on your own. So, and you have another game that's going to be coming out potentially this year. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Um, so that one's called Dr. Lichenberg's Apothecary of Remedies. And couldn't tell you how I got in this rabbit hole, but at some <laughs> point I got into a, a hole of 1800s uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wish I could remember how I like got into it, but I became fascinated with it because at, at the time it was like state of the art medicine, but like looking back on it now, these people are crazy. Like, yeah. they, like it was insane. Like you got a headache or something. I'm going to give you cocaine. Um, you know, there's things called like things called, uh, tobacco smoke enemas which like is supposed to help revive people if they're dying like it's just like the amount of stuff that they got away with uh, yeah and then the medicine that they you know they're putting formaldehyde and nitroglycerin and all kinds of just random crap in this that they're putting in people's bodies um and from what i found most of it didn't work sure yeah so it was it was kind of like half you know experimentation to see what will but then half like snake oil salesmen of you know people that knew it's it's you know like dr pepper that we drink you know every day um started out as a brain tonic you know um and so all the it, i just got fascinated and so i thought you know how can i make a game centered around this medicine and so again Maybe I have a, a fascination with death, but you have a, this one's a co-op and you're, you've got a patient who is dying this time and you have to work together to revive this patient using um, medicine from the 1800s. And so um, every, every, every medicine, every ailment um, is as true to the time period as, as I could possibly find with mm -hmm. the research that I did. I'm not a historian. I'm not a not even a good researcher um <laughs> my you know high school grades will tell you that but being able to put on the card like historical information about like how the what was in the medicine or what it was used for or like how successful or unsuccessful it was so every card has like little you know factual flavor text every mm -hmm. ailment you know um, tells a little bit about what it is um so you can if you want to you can learn like about all the craziness or you could just you know play the game and try to save you know your patient from dying mm -hmm. um so that was a lot of fun to that would take a lot of uh a lot longer than just a card game about death you know trying to incorporate all kinds of, of medicine figure out how to turn it into a game mm -hmm. i love the aspect and i was thinking that when you're going through that you're you know all these old tiny potions and elixirs and pulses and all this other stuff um, that it would be really fun if on the cars there were, uh, they, they were legit used for something and yeah. you've done all that. I think that's great. That's so much fun when games have little tidbits down at the bottom of the car that you can read for fun. Yeah. And it's because I'm not a nurse or a doctor or anything like that. Like the game is still like, it's light. You don't have to know anything about these medicines to mm -hmm. play the game. It's just kind of a fun theme to attach to these specific mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure if someone created enough could take that the game, the structure of the game, and apply a different theme to it. But it's just more of a a fun, you know, light dip into kind of that world. Sure. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love those ideas. So now, is this something, from the standpoint of uh, games, is this something that came to you naturally, like your mind just kind of works with these mechanics? Are you thinking about this all day, every day? Uh, yeah, so that that was the, like, once I created that first game, it's the, the, it's almost like a big puzzle. Like, mm -hmm. you, I, I unlocked something, and now I can't go back, so I'm stuck. Um, but, like, creating that first game kind of just unlocked something in me where I'm like, ooh, what about a game like this? Or ooh, what about a game like that? Or ooh, what if it was? And so just like I'm driving to work, I'm getting ready for bed at night. And all of a sudden, 
you know, g- game pops into my head and I'm like, oh, okay. And then of course I'm not going to go to sleep that night. Cause now I'm like, okay, if you start like this and then it goes like this and then it happens like this. And then, and so I have, I literally, I have like a, a journal mm-hmm. app on here and there's at least 20 different, like just game ideas, ideas that, and so it's never, it's never ending. This was, you know, the, the medicine one was the next. I'm actually working on two others that are um, still in the, like trying to figure it out in my head, mm-hmm. uh, put it on paper, see if it actually makes anything. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's like a never ending thing now. Um, <laughs> somebody like somebody will just say something. I'll be like, Ooh, I wonder if that would make a game. Yeah. You've kind of, you can't put the genie back in the bottle now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, that's, that's awesome. I will have links to your current game out. I'll have links down below. And then when your crowdfunding adventure starts with the new one, make sure you send that to me so I can include it in the description down below, because I think your game sound awesome. And I appreciate you coming on talking to me because I've never talked to a board game designer before. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's been fun. I don't actually uh, get to talk about it that much, um, you know. Um, so I appreciate the, the chance to come on here and, and just blah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm always fascinated by it. And hopefully our viewers are too. But Josh, I will talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your afternoon. And thanks again for coming on. Thank you.